Tacoma upper control arm replacement with lifts. Is it even necessary? Well, good morning, everybody. How are you this morning? Pretty good here. And that's right, do you need to replace the upper control arms when you lift your Tacoma? You know, there's been a lot of questions about that. People ask me all the time, do I need to replace the UCAs or upper control arms if I lift my Tacoma? Now, first of all, my Tacoma is lifted. It is a 3-2 lift. I did a, I guess I'd call it a shock or strut coilover spacer uh, replacement here or addition to the front. And then on the rear, I did just uh, 5,100 Bill Steins. So, do you really need to replace the UCAs? Well, let's take a look. You know, I did have this shoe before with the UCAs on mine. Now, I don't think it had really anything to do with lifting the truck. It had more to do with the wheel offset because of the bigger, larger tires I put on. And my problem was distance in between the side of the tire here, you can see right here, and the uh, little elbow, if you will, on the UCA. Now, I ended up, the first time I did this, with about, I'd say, maybe three-quarter, probably more like half an inch or so clearance uh, between the side of the tire here and the UCA. Now, there's never any problem with that as long as you're going in a straight line. And I find a lot of people, and probably people that are having a problem, will always tell you, nah, you don't need to do anything with the UCA, you'll be fine. But when you dig a little bit deeper, they will admit they have some rubbing there. And the reason you have rubbing, or when you have rubbing, is taking a turn with a dip, right? When you turn the tire, you're going to put it a little bit closer to this nub here on the UCA. And when the tire articulates, because obviously when you turn, the tire is going to move a little bit, right? Side to side. So you're going to lose the distance that you have between the inside edge of that tire and the UCA. Now there's two ways to avoid that. One is wheel offset. Obviously, if you pull the tire out a little bit, which I think you can see on mine, it does stick out a little bit. It's not huge, but a little bit beyond the fender here. Maybe you can see a little bit better in the back as to the distance. But it does stick out a little bit, and that's due to the wheel offset I have. I have pulled the wheel, if you will, out away from the truck a little bit. Well, that obviously moves the tire out away from the truck a little bit and gives me more distance between that inner edge of the tire and the UCA. So I don't have that issue anymore when I'm taking turns. And you'll notice I don't have a huge difference. It's probably about maybe an inch and a half, maybe, yeah, probably an inch and a half, inch and a quarter. So just enough, I think, to keep it away from the UCA. Now, if I was out doing heavy duty or severe off-roading or anything like that, then I would, uh, I would have a problem. But not really any issue with mine because I've, le I've left myself enough distance that I don't really have any troubles here. Now, if I was a more heavy duty off-roader and really was making that tire move back and forth, I don't think an inch and a half is enough. I think you probably need at minimum two inches of space between that UCA and the tire so that you don't have any rubbing. Now, another way to get that, and this is where I think changing out the UCA really comes into play, is going with a more streamlined UCA, right? There are UCAs out there, replacements, that don't stick out so much here, right? They don't have as much of a curve here or they sit a little bit higher up. In doing that you're kind of streamlining this a little bit and achieving the same goal as if you were to go with a larger wheel offset. You're moving or getting rid of this nub here and when you get rid of this nub or at least decrease its um, distance away from the truck you're going to gain more distance between the tire and that new UCA itself. That is the biggest reason I can see with replacing your UCAs. Now, there is a caveat to this, of course. This is based on a what I consider to be a pretty conservative lift. Mine's a 3.2. It actually ended up to be about a 3.5.2. Um, but the bigger you go, 
the more parts you need to replace, right? So if you're slapping a, I don't know, six inch lift or something on here, well now you're going even higher, right? And you're gonna have to do something to accommodate that angle as well. So it becomes more a function of um, the way the truck handles and drives as compared to how close it is to your tire, right? Um, people have mentioned that you can't get a good alignment unless you replace your UCAs. Well, I'm here to tell you that's a bunch of BS. It, you can see, obviously, I have not replaced my UCAs, and I don't have any problem with alignment. It took one time at a good shop, of course, and always make sure that you go to a good shop, right? I mean, quality work starts with the quality of the shop, right? So I had it done one time, and I haven't had any kind of alignment issues. No problems whatsoever. So you don't need to replace the UCAs when you go for a lift um, with alignment or concerning alignment, I suppose. I'm proof of that, haven't had any issues myself. So really, I guess it comes down to what you wanna do. You know, again, if you're gonna be a big time off-roader and you're gonna be taking a lot of divots and ruts and uneven surfaces where that tire's really moving around, then you're probably gonna have a problem unless you've got about two inches of clearance there. Again, that can be obtained by going with a streamlined UCA, which of course is going to cost you more money, or while you're at it, while you're replacing those wheels and tires, and let's face it, I don't know anybody that lifts a truck that doesn't put new wheels and tires on, right? Just doesn't look good with those smaller donutty looking tires once you lift the truck. So make sure at that point that you're going with an offset that is going to give you the distance that you need between the UCA, the upper control arm, and those new aggressive bigger, wider tires that you're gonna put on. That's where it really matters when you're going with something like a 3-2 lift like what I have here. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here, kind of talk about that a little bit. Uh, I continue to get questions about that. People ask, if I'm lifting my truck, do I need to replace the UCAs? And the short of it is, it depends. Anyway, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Have you run into this before? Did you not take into consideration your wheel offset and have a problem with it rubbing the UCA? I'd be curious to know. And what did you do? Also, real quick, if you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator sitting right back there. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.